is refusing to devastate her state's economy and ruin people's lives by imposing a lockdown. She didn't. That's obviously made her public enemy number one for the liberal media. Governor Kristi Noem joins us now. Governor, the media, they're not happy with you. They're now claiming South Dakota is becoming a COVID hotspot. Um, you have seven deaths in the state. Um, why are they coming after you? We've got one issue in a pork processing plant in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, but outside of that, two thirds of our state has no cases or one case in an entire county. Um, so we're doing very well as a state. We are addressing the one hot spot that we do have and aggressively testing in that area. But that's it. what you talked about, Laura, is exactly right, is we should be tracking who's in the hospital, um, what the death rate is, and South Dakotans are doing a fantastic job following my recommendations, and we've been able to keep our business businesses open and allow people to take on some personal responsibility. Uh, the reaction from South Dakotans on being different, I mean, there are a, a handful of states mm -hmm. that Iowa, Utah, Wyoming, obviously South North Dakota, mm -hmm. Arkansas, decided to go their own way. Um, the blowback, though, mm -hmm. uh, is the media blaming you for the, the pork processing plant outbreak. Watch. Mm -hmm. Smithfield Foods, now largest coronavirus hotspot in U.S. Christy Nome has insisted that she still will not issue a stay-at-home order in her state. Her state is home to one of the country's largest coronavirus hotspots. The governor just lets this problem get bigger and bigger and bigger and wants to think that she can pretend it out of existence. Governor, you're pretending this isn't happening? Is that what you're doing? No, what they're neglecting to tell folks is that this uh, processing plant is critical infrastructure. Regardless of a shelter in place order or not, it would have been up and running because it's an important part of our nation's food supply. Uh, so that's what's been happening on the national level is they've been not telling all the facts uh, behind this. Uh, the people of South Dakota uh, can be trusted to make good decisions. We have common sense. Uh, that's why people want to live here and that's why I love living here. Uh, Governor Noem, are you surprised that so many states that are quite populous as, as a matter of just percentages uh, have done really well in this battle with the coronavirus? I mean, we were, they were predicting, uh, you know, po potentially two million people dead, the hospital system was going to be overwhelmed. Uh, didn't really come close. New York bent their system. New Jersey, very stressed. But I heard that Governor of Louisiana saying, you know, we're, you know, we're doing pretty well. We're going in the right direction and we, we didn't collapse our system. Yeah, I think it, it does uh, make a big difference uh, how seriously people take it, how you communicate with them. I know when I gave our folks the guidelines in South Dakota about what we needed to do to flatten our curve, uh, they followed. Uh, they, they took that seriously, and we've bent our curve by 75 percent in South Dakota. We've had a dramatic impact on the slowing down of the spread, and we'll be able to handle it with a capacity in our health care systems, and it's all because of decisions that the people made and the fact that we work together to do that. I I think that's what's been unique in South Dakota, and we've probably seen that in other states as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, folks at uh, MSNBC morning shows saying that you were, the, the, the way they're doing it is like, you're too casual about it. When, I mean, governors are supposed to listen to their people and be pragmatic because you're balancing rights, civil rights, and health. So it, that's the balance, rights and livelihood versus a virus that, you know, is very tough. It's a, it, you I, know, <laughs> yeah. it's, but they're, they, it's amazing. They're a, treating you guys like pariahs. They are. And I had a real honest conversation with the people in our state. I told them I took an oath to uphold the constitution of our state of South Dakota. I took an oath when I was in Congress, obviously, to uphold the constitution of the United States. I believe in our freedoms and liberties. What I've seen across the country is so many people give up their liberties for just a little bit of security, uh, and they don't have to do that. Uh, if a leader will take too much power in a time of crisis, uh, that is how we lose our country. Uh, so I've felt mm -hmm. like I've had to use every single opportunity to talk about why we slow things down. We make decisions based on science and facts right. and make sure that we're not letting emotion grab a hold of the situation. Uh, liberty, freedom, and our inalienable mm -hmm. rights and balancing health. That's uh, really important. That's Governor, right. thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. It's great to have you on.
And coming Absolutely. up, what does an extended lockdown